really sorry not to be there in person i'm missing an excellent meeting but it was unavoidable circumstances so uh, we'll talk today about instability at small scale caused by viscosity stratification this has been a topic i've been working on for a long time now but there's some nice new results at very low reynolds numbers which is very uh, appropriate for microflows which is what i wanted to talk about today so we will be talking about stability problems and in the stability problems we will be focusing on uh, this kind of shear flow today can you see my cursor uh, yes we can okay so um, so we are talking about pressure driven flow of two miscible fluids so the two fluids have viscosity different from each other but density the same so this is fluid 1 and fluid 2 going through a channel in this picture and it could be in core annular form with one fluid in the center and one fluid on the sides or it could be in a layered structure like this and pipe flows are another example which we will not be talking about today so in all of these flows that we are talking about the base flow u is a function of y alone where y is the normal direction and x is the flow direction and uh, this is the kind of velocity profile that's displayed when the two viscosities are different so uh, there are you know instability patterns at all scales in flows like this like very large scales in lava you see enormously complicated patterns in chocolate when we make it at home we see that but the thing we're going to talk about today is this experiment uh, which is being performed by domenico truzzolillo's group and this is a collaboration that i'm going to be talking about this is in a micro channel so first of all whenever you have a viscosity variation your pressure you know the usual parabolic velocity profile we get is modified by this viscosity variation term the mean viscosity variation term and because of this we can get all kinds of profiles with inflection points now the knee jerk reaction of any person studying stability is that okay the minute you get an inflection point you assume that the flow is unstable uh, or you expect that the flow will be unstable so uh, that's because we are taught rayleigh and fiotov theorems in uh, you know fluid mech 101 and we know that any profile which looks like this is stable and a profile which looks like this is unstable however that means that this one doesn't has an inflection point and this one doesn't however it's important to remember that these theorems are made for inviscid flow and while in viscous flow also very often you see signatures of these uh, uh, inflectional instabilities those don't happen all the time in fact the very low reynolds number instabilities are usually not inflectional and we have a very nice way of theoretically checking for these because uh in the numer in the um uh, you know uh, numerical solution we can turn off the um viscosity terms viscosity variation terms and keep only these terms in the mean and we see that the instability vanishes which means that the viscosity variation in the stability equation is giving the uh, correct answer and th these instabilities are not inflectional <laughs> that's the first point i want to make about small scale flows uh, now like when you look at uh, this system you have the navier stokes equations with the only difference that viscosity is inside this gradient term because viscosity can vary both in the mean and in the perturbation and this is the continuity equation and a species balance equation so the species that you've added here gives you the viscosity variation now as is usual in stability problems we take this u we split it into the base flow that we saw earlier and a perturbation which looks like this which has dependence on x y z and time and k x is the uh, stream wise wave number and beta times k x is the span wise wave number so basically we have a wave which is oblique so like it's you can imagine it In, in an oblique direction in a plane parallel to the wall so this is the uh, instability wave we are looking at and we are going to ask is it stable or unstable now 
uh, when you put that into the Navier-Stokes equations with viscosity variation, you get uh, three equations which describe the instability. So here we've eliminated a few terms. We've kept only the normal velocity V, the velocity in that direction, perturbation velocity, and the perturbation viscosity in that direction, sorry, vorticity in that direction. So it's the normal velocity and normal vorticity. So in terms of these, it's standard to write the or Sommerfeld and Squire equations, the textbook ones. We get modifications because we've written, uh, we, we've used viscosity variations, which come in, you know, like here in all of these terms, in all of these terms, as well as, you know, the mean viscosity variations in these terms. So all of these terms are extra terms. This alone would be the normal or Sommerfeld. So we write the modified or Sommerfeld and Squire equations. Now, the point is that this is a very complicated three-dimensional uh, set of equations. So what do we do to make life simple? So like when we studied these equations, uh, we could actually perform a slightly clever uh, transformation of variables. And we could actually show that Squire's theorem is valid even in this case where viscosity is varying. So this is very, very useful for somebody who is doing microflows. We are actually writing up this paper. So we can take Squire's theorem, uh, which said that uh, two-dimensional instabilities occur at Reynolds numbers smaller than a corresponding three-dimensional instability. So this is basically Squire's theorem. And we can show that uh, if I have for every oblique wave like this, if I have a Reynolds 3D at which it goes unstable, I can find an equivalent 2D wave which will go unstable at an even lower Reynolds number. And in fact, I can make a one-to-one -one correspondence between every 3D wave and its corresponding 2D wave. So like we can actually solve only the 2D problem. We can set the third dimension to zero. And this is only for exponential instabilities. The story is different with algebraic, but so like this is the uh, neutral boundary at, uh, you know, in, in two dimensions at beta equal to zero. So this, uh, the, the flow is unstable over this Reynolds numbers and these streamwise wave numbers. So inside this region is unstable and everywhere outside is stable. And using the transformation we have, we can find the entire cylinder of instability in the third direction. So we can find all the oblique waves and their corresponding uh, instabilities. So this is what uh, the Squires theorem buys us. And so I'm just showing a sample instability for a flow which looks like this, a core annular flow with fluid one and fluid two. So basically the moral is there seem to be different modes of instability which are caused by different physics. And the Reynolds number at which you first see instability is very low. It's of order one. In this example, where the viscosity ratio is 20, we've got something like two or three as the critical Reynolds number. But uh, um, we can easily uh, get uh, Reynolds numbers uh, much, much, much lower than one. Uh, and these are uh, the specific parameters in this case. But uh, the answer is very, very sensitive to parameters. So. The first thing is that earlier we would we'd always worked with high Reynolds numbers, but now we're able to show instabilities at very low Reynolds numbers. Okay, so the broad picture can be summarized in this little graph. I have Schmidt number, which represents the miscibility of one fluid in another. The higher the Schmidt, the lower the miscibility. The Reynolds number on that axis and the viscosity ratio on the third axis. Now, like the region which is unstable becomes larger and larger and larger as you increase Schmidt number. So every Reynolds, I mean, at very low Reynolds number, you can get instability as the Schmidt number becomes larger. Similarly, when the viscosity ratio becomes larger and larger, it could be asymmetric or symmetric. It doesn't matter. In the case of symmetric, it needs to be more viscous near the wall. You get a, a very, very low Reynolds number instability. So we are interested in living very close to this plane where the Reynolds number is zero. And uh, we can actually 
uh, work out by these equations and doing systematic singular perturbation studies and other things, we can actually separate out different mechaniz mechanisms of instability. Uh, we will be, uh, uh, you know, calling out some of them by name uh, in the coming slides. So the question which I will have not yet worked on, but will leave for the group to think about is that if we want to get good mixing inside a micro channel, then what should be the conditions? What should be the viscosity ratio, the amount, relative amounts of fluid one and two? What kind of thing can we do to um, optimize the mixing? That's what this study can lead to next. So we are going to be looking at basically the middle scenario today. The, uh, the, this is another scenario which I'll briefly touch upon and at the end where you have a viscosity uh, variation which is very gentle. Whereas here we have sudden, more sudden changes in viscosity. So the usual unstratified picture is as follows. Above a certain critical Reynolds number, you get exponential growth of instabilities and there is quite a large Reynolds number, which is called the energy critical Reynolds number, below which any perturbation you put is going to decay. There's no other option. And in between these two Reynolds, there is a region where there is no exponential growth of instabilities, but there is algebraic growth. In viscosity stratified flow, this picture changes dramatically. At very, very low critical Reynolds number, as we saw in the previous example, we can see exponential growth. The energy critical Reynolds number is even smaller than that, or it could be identical to that. Typically, it's smaller than that because the flow is still non-normal. So there's a small window of algebraic growth, but exponential growth of instabilities is the dominant thing now, as opposed to the standard textbook uh, you know, knowledge for shear flows. And uh, this is about when nonlinearities become important very quickly. So uh, the overlap and inflectional instabilities, the two kinds of instabilities I spoke about earlier, can be seen separately in this example. So like here, this is uh, fluid one and fluid two, and the location is the location of this mixed layer is changed slowly, like it goes from uh, point eight the h is equal to 0.8 to something like 0.25 over here. So then you see that this thing is very, very sensitive to where you put this mixed layer. And when it's at, at this 0.8 kind of place, you see that there is not much difference between unstratified flow and this. You get the usual tolmian schlichting waves. But as you change this parameter, you get this very low Reynolds number instability, which is caused by the overlap of this thing with the critical layer where the phase speed is equal to the mean flow. So this is a new kind of instability we found. And uh, this is the standard inflectional instability, which is coming due to Rayleigh and Fjortoft. And then as you change the parameter, these uh, uh, instability things can merge. So although different mechanisms are driving it at different places, you can get one single patch of instability. And there is yet another instability, which is coming due to poor miscibility. And that happens when the Schmidt number crosses a certain number. And so you see that as you change the Schmidt number, you can get extremely low Reynolds number instability, as we saw in that summary plot. So we already expected this. Now, like uh, I'd like to talk about this experiment for a couple of minutes. So uh, this is an experiment uh, performed by the Tutsolillo group in the University of Montpellier, they have a micro channel in which, so they feed in glycerol and water. So this uh, height of the micro channel is 100 microns and the width is about a millimeter. So up to a certain height, we have water because we can uh, manipulate the two flow rates. We can independently decide what these two flow rates are. And then like uh, you have a water glycerol interface over here and since water and glycerol are miscible, there's a small thin layer inside which the concentration of glycerol goes from zero to one. So there's a thin mixed layer there. And then uh, when they do this, uh, under certain uh, flow rates, they can observe uh, instability waves. So these are waves which grow and then saturate in this case. 
so as you increase the flow rate of water you can actually make it more messy you can make it more messy and go you know towards mixing we still don't have a result with mixing in this case because that was not the aim the aim was to understand the instability uh, now interestingly you will see that the uh, wave length when you change the water flow rate when you keep increasing the water flow rate goes bigger 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 and then again becomes smaller 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 so there is a maximum uh, wavelength at a particular flow rate so interestingly the wavelength is non monotonic in the um, in the flow rate so uh, it is uh, it is not easy to do a complete stability analysis for this it would have to be a global stability analysis in 3d uh, but uh, you know hiding behind squires theorem and using the correct velocity profile the 3d velocity profile in the mean and then sitting in the mid plane we uh, actually performed the theory for this and we solved the modified or sommerfeld and modified square equations that we talked about and uh, we see like different modes of instability growing and if you look hard at it there is this case which is 70 the flow rate of glycerol is slightly different so these are only qualitative uh, matches at 70 you get a smaller k uh, a smaller k uh, sorry a bigger k which means a smaller wavelength and in between at 275 which is like this you get a much much uh, uh, um, smaller k which means a much larger wavelength like two to three times the wavelength and then you keep increasing the flow rate and again it goes very small so like although numerically it's not identical it's not too bad we've got numerical comparisons as well uh, you see that this non-monotonicity is predicted and uh, it comes due to the arising of a new mode of instability as you increase the flow rate uh, Professor and, Lama, uh, you have one yeah. more minute you have one more minute yeah yeah, yeah i'm done uh, I'm, I'm almost done so like uh, so the typical non linear structures which i didn't talk about are going to be very very affected by viscosity stratification as well so here we have a heated wall uh, 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 and on the hot side you see the non linear structures are completely different from that on the cold side and on the hot side they much more intensified and low wave number compared to unstratified so like uh, the summary of my talk is given here and since i'm out of time you can read it up thanks for your attention thank you professor rama for your uh, sharing your insights now the floor is open to questions thank you professor uh, so i have a one quick question so if i understood correctly so if you have a, a high viscosity ratio uh, then this type of instability will trigger right yes correct Okay, so uh, like this type of system, uh, for example, uh, some textures uh, surfaces like liquid impregnated surfaces. Mm -hmm. So uh, if uh, say capillary due to capillary motion, uh, mm -hmm. if some liquid is uh, withdrawing from the texture mm -hmm. and we keep it inside some liquid environment, so mm -hmm. similar, uh, what do you expect? Like if the ratio of the viscosity is high, so will it enhance this uh, retraction motion or what will happen? So uh, I can't immediately say about the retraction motion because instability is a very difficult thing to use to predict anything. Like you can have, you know, uh, better retraction or worse retraction. For example, in the uh, um, aircraft industry, it's a completely different Reynolds number, but it's an interesting analogy where you know, on the wing, they do either blowing or suction. And this blowing and suction, uh, it uh, can stabilize or destabilize as the case may be. So both blowing and suction, which are the opposite of each other, can induce stabilization under certain circumstances. So I wouldn't hazard a guess, but one thing I would say is that it will be an interesting case to study. It will throw up some physics, which uh, we don't expect. And one more thing is that if I keep the viscosity very low at both the walls, then I can stabilize also enormously. If the viscosity is high at both the walls, then it destabilizes. Whereas if it is asymmetric like fluid one and fluid two, it always destabilizes. 
Thank you, Professor. Uh, so I have a one quick question. So if I understood correctly, so if you have a, a high viscosity ratio, uh, then this type of instability will trigger, right? Yes, correct. Okay. So uh, like this type of system, uh, for example, uh, some textures uh, surfaces like liquid impregnated surfaces. So uh, if uh, say capillary due to capillary motion. Uh, if, uh, if some liquid is uh, withdrawing from the texture and we keep it inside some liquid environment. So similar, uh, what do you expect? Like if the ratio of the viscosity is high, so will it enhance this uh, retraction motion or what will happen? So uh, I can't immediately say about the retraction motion because instability is a very difficult thing to use to predict anything that you can have you know, uh, better retraction or worse retraction. For example, in the uh, um, aircraft industry, it's a completely different Reynolds number, but it's an interesting analogy where, you know, on the wing they do either blowing or suction. And this blowing and suction, uh, it uh, can stabilize or destabilize as the case may be. So both blowing and suction, which are the opposite of each other, can induce stabilization under certain circumstances. So I wouldn't hazard a guess, but one thing I would say is that it will be an interesting case to study. It will throw up some physics which uh, we don't expect. And one more thing is that if I keep the viscosity very low at both the walls, then I can stabilize also enormously. If the viscosity is high at both the walls, then it destabilizes. Whereas if it is asymmetric like fluid 1 and fluid 2, it always destabilizes.